morning. Uh, I'm going to talk about how um, blockchain is uh, from Bitcoin is like DNA, which is like uh, genetics, which is like life. And uh, these things are, uh, you'll see, are more obvious as you look into them in more detail. And the similarity is not perfect in that uh, uh, Mark Twain says the, the future doesn't repeat, it rhymes, meaning it's not an exact copy, it's uh, similar. And so in this way, blockchain is similar to DNA and genetics and life, but it's not exactly the same as you'll see. And so uh, uh, the human genome, our, our DNA, um, is on a computer, it's about one and a half uh, gigabytes of storage. And it's, it's uh, six billion letters or three billion pairs. And the uh, uh, genome is, is large, but the blockchain of, of Bitcoin itself um, <coughs> is already uh, substantially larger than, uh, than a, a human genome. And it, uh, blockchain passed um, our, the size of our DNA uh, in about 2012 and is expanding at an exponential rate. And uh, um, blockchain works on an algorithm that uh, uh, stays about 10 minutes between writes. Um, and the, that algorithm adjusts to keep the time relatively constant. And as more and more um, uh, Bitcoin is mined, more and more uh, computational effort is required to do that. And the size of the blockchain gets bigger and bigger because it, it replicates everything since the genesis or since the origin of, of the Bitcoin's blockchain. And that algorithm is uh, uh, growing um, exponentially. And the graph uh, on the right is the uh, uh, forecast, essentially, of, of how big blockchain is going to be, where it should pass uh, one gigabyte or, or 1,000 gigabytes or one terabyte uh, in about um, 2022 and continue um, on the, until uh, uh, 2140, 2140, uh, when all of the Bitcoins will have been mined. And so blockchain, um, and, uh, of which there are a few different versions, most notably uh, Bitcoin's blockchain, which is different than Ethereum's blockchain, and then there are others, uh, have some characteristics that are somewhat new in computer um, architectures. And uh, the most notable ones is, is it's voluntary in that people choose uh, to um, make their transactions on a, um, on a blockchain. It's borderless in that there isn't a country or a government uh, or a boundary of where it, it begins and ends. It's uh, continuous everywhere on the internet. It's decentralized in that there isn't a, a president of Bitcoin or a, a company of Bitcoin or, or, or whatnot. It's uh, distributed, um, uh, again, worldwide, essentially anywhere the internet goes or could go. Um, and it's replicating in that every time uh, a transaction is, is written to the blockchain, uh, it's, it's fully copied. Um, and the, it's a protocol and framework for doing transactions uh, in a way that you can trust the algorithm and don't have to trust a bank or a government or, or a person, per se, and that the algorithm itself uh, it, uh, maintains the trust that the transaction is valid and all the transactions that came before are valid. So I would suggest that uh, genetics uh, has these same characteristics in that uh, uh, organisms that choose to use uh, DNA are, are voluntary. It's also borderless in that there isn't a boundary uh, 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 or by a government as to where genetics can go or not. It's decentralized, it's distributed, uh, it's peer-to-peer -peer replicating in that um, the, it doesn't go through a central process to replicate uh, cells or organisms. And it has a certain f framework and protocol for how uh, uh, things are encoded in the bases of DNA and how genes are encoded that, uh, and how life works in general. And so information replication 
uh, on, on, a, uh, on a blockchain is a blockchain is essentially a ledger like a spreadsheet that just keeps the uh, transactions in and out. And so if I were to put my gene sequence on the blockchain, my gene sequence doesn't go on the blockchain itself. There's a, just a record that I did it and a record of who's looked at it or checked it out. And that my gene sequence is in a computer somewhere, uh, hopefully not Equifax, um, but the, uh, the concept of putting something on the blockchain isn't putting the actual data on the blockchain, it's, it's just recording it in the ledger that you can be confident that when something is checked in or checked out, uh, it is not, can't be faked uh, and is an accurate record, but the data itself can exist elsewhere and the blockchain points to where it is, um, and, but that's not the same as putting something inside the blockchain, it's just a record of it on the blockchain. Um, and then blockchains scale in a, in a reliable way. Uh, the, uh, in the case of Bitcoin, it's scaling by, by mining. And the mining has uh, a feature in that it uses a lot of compute powder, power, which uses a lot of electricity, which is part of the reason it's difficult to, to uh, hack or to uh, um, fake, in that it would take um, a lot of com more compute power to make a fake blockchain that everything uh, that came before has to be reconciled and fake. And, and it's easier to just uh, uh, do the mining and replicate it. And thus you can trust it, it's, it's not uh, hackable. And the speed at which it replicates um, uh, gets more difficult as the algorithms get more difficult. Um, and the, uh, uh, thus the amount of energy it uses uh, is expanding exponentially. And so, uh, again, the parallel where uh, DNA is essentially a log of the uh, characteristics of a creature. Uh, the machinery that replicates DNA in people has an error rate in that uh, one in 10 to the ninth times uh, uh, it makes a mistake in copying the letters. And, and that's a, a, a 10 with, with uh, nine zeros behind it or 10 billion. Um, and so uh, human is, is about six billion. So by the time we go from a single cell to multiple cells, there's already one error has been introduced in our DNA uh, as we mature into an adult. Um, and DNA and genetics is a protocol that's adaptive um, to the uh, metabolism of the organism. organism and uh, um, and it, it works on a biophysical mechanism for its speed that, that limits its speed. And the efficiency um, uh, is something that defines which creatures survive and which don't. And so in the case of, uh, of blockchain, uh, it uses a mining mechanism that uses electricity. And the parallel in, in life and in genetics uh, is, is what predation is, is where uh, you either with photosynthesis uh, create energy or uh, by eating other living things an organism creates energy and this is used to power uh, metabolism and replication. And so this graph in the middle um, is the amount of compute power that is required to do a transaction on the blockchain in uh, what's called petahashes, which is how much uh, compute power is used, which also correlates with how much energy is used. And as chips get customized to doing blockchain mining, uh, the uh, uh, compute power goes up more efficiently, uh, but the uh, algorithm and the, and the difficulty of, of doing a Bitcoin or blockchain transaction uh, follows a, a computational difficulty graph like this. So information uh, flows, and that information isn't static in life or in uh, blockchain, in that uh, in biology, um, the information coded in the genetics of our parents uh, uh, transfers to our DNA, which transfers to RNA, to proteins, and to the metabolism of how we uh, live and eat food and, and replicate. And the other parallels are our blockchain uh, um, metabolism is, is in the form of tokens like Ethereum or Bitcoin or, or many of the 2,000 others. Um, and the genome uh, um, equivalent uh, it is something that's done in metabolism and that is also part of an ecosystem. So a rainforest has a metabolism or a, a coral reef, 
as well as individual organisms. Uh, so it's a metabolism across species in an ecosystem. And then speciation, uh, which is parallel, uh, is where one organism becomes two different species, uh, is, is similar in um, uh, blockchain to what's called forking, where, um, for example, the original blockchain uh, is copied into a, a second copy, where the history of the past is there, but they go on divergent pathways, uh, for example, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, are like two different species of, uh, that were once the same thing. And so how these species uh, survive or not is, uh, is based on natural selection uh, from Darwin's laws and that um, uh, different features of, of a species of blockchain will survive or, or fail based on uh, how ad adaptive or fit they are to the environment. And uh, humans do selective breeding or farming where you pick a certain uh, characteristic uh, set of features of, a, of an organism and replicate that or clone it. And that's a, a uniform kind of selective farming. But uh, um, farming leads to monoculture as opposed to diversity like you would find in nature or in, in a, a rainforest, for example. Um, and so monoculture, uh, like uh, uh, the Irish potatoes or, or American corn or things of this nature, all of the individuals have essentially the same genetics. They're clones of each other. And this uh, is good for food because you can make more of things that people like. But it, it creates a problem in that um, those clones uh, can be attacked by a parasite or a predator and the, there's a, uh, an ethnobotanist uh, uh, of, of some renown uh, who has a saying that, that monoculture breeds disease. So things like the Irish potato famine or, or other um, uh, types of uh, diseases that have happened to farmed uh, plants and animals, or in, including trees and forests and things, where a particular um, species can be wiped out uh, because they're all too similar. And so this uh, leads to, to variation and, and most people are familiar with the tree of life where uh, uh, there's different kinds of organisms that are, have, have speciated into different species and, the, um, and, and so microbes and plants and animals uh, and, and people are related to each other genetically in that we're all cousins of each other. And the uh, history of, of mutation has uh, changed these into different species, and the different species coexist in a diverse ecosystem. And so uh, occasionally um, uh, combinations or mutations happen where um, the, the offspring is different enough from the parents that uh, uh, it's a, a new species or a new kind of uh, organism. And, and this uh, happens also in, in, in blockchain in that um, after a fork, uh, a new um, uh, type of, of species uh, continues on and it no longer can interchange or breed with the previous blockchains. And so a, a complicated graph of how this looks in biology is that this is the, the history of life on this planet uh, across four billion years where all of the DNA life uh, originated in, in one species and has evolved and forked and, and uh, uh, mutated to many, many species that are all related to each other uh, across billions of years. And most of them have not survived, uh, but the ones, the, the several billion uh, different species that exist now are all related uh, to each other as cousins in that we're cousins with trees and cousins with mushrooms and cousins with uh, uh, microbes. Um, and we all work on the same DNA type blockchain and we all um, uh, metabolize more or less the same way but are slightly different species. And so the genesis of life, uh, uh, the, the original organism which is in the center of this graph is similar to the genesis block on a, on a blockchain, which was the first uh, transactions that Satoshi Nakamoto created for blockchain that uh, created uh, Bitcoin's blockchain 
um, and then other forks off of that, uh, including uh, the uh, Bitcoin Cash and the various forms of Bitcoin and Ethereum and then the various uh, 2,000 plus different kinds of tokens that uh, now are in the market are different species of, of blockchain, just like we have different species of uh, living organisms. And so um, the, which ones survive and which ones don't uh, are the ones that are most adaptable to change. It's not the most efficient one, it's not the most accurate one, it's not the largest one. Uh, it's the one that adapts to the environment and the ecosystem. Uh, and change favors diversity. So. Uh, there will likely be many, many different kinds of blockchains um, and it's not clear at any time which ones will be the most dominant species of blockchain in the future in the same way that uh, that happens in biology. And what happened in biology um, uh, about a half a billion years ago uh, was something called the Cambrian Explosion. That happened around the same time as, as things like eyes were invented for creatures uh, but it, it went from a few species to um, three and a half million different species very rapidly. And this will likely happen to the future of, of blockchain and that there's a few blockchain styles now uh, that will likely, um, through some innovation that's yet to happen, uh, create a, a, a much more complex ecosystem where uh, there could be millions of, of different blockchains instead of thousands or, or dozens. Um, and so the, the Cambrian ex explosion uh, went from, from a, a very few to three and a half million uh, species. And so this is, again, likely to happen to blockchains, but um, manifest in either new kinds of tokens, so each of you could have a token of your name, uh, or new distributed applications or distributed organizations. And so um, in the far future, uh, genetic or biochemical life is information that is evolving uh, to uh, digital information where most of us are a combination of, of our genetic information and our Facebook profile and our credit report and our uh, uh, medical records in that we're um, uh, part digital and part uh, biochemical now and the, the trend is moving towards more and more digital and things like blockchain uh, uh, enable uh, more and more complicated uh, information that can be replicated accurately. And so uh, our self, or who I would define as, as me, is increasingly uh, information, whether that's digital or biochemical. Uh, so Gregory Bateson uh, has an uh, example of, of, a, of a man with an ax in that where the edge of the man stops um, is not s so clear to evaluate. Is it, is it their skin? Is it their hand? Is it the axe? Is it the blade of the axe? Is that they can cut down trees and make fire and cook food and have uh, a family? It, it, can they cut down a whole forest? That where a, a person ends is partly their um, potential of what they might do. And so uh, this information flows as, as we replicate with, with other individuals, uh, both biologically but also socially and culturally, and exchange information in that the information flows over time. And that uh, what we are is information, but the uh, a way that that information manifests is uh, our, our chemicals change as we eat food and metabolize, and our information changes over time as well, our memories and so forth. And so the a flow of information of what is a person is more like a wave than it is like a particle. And so that's where I'll stop. Okay.